Getting your first 100 subscribers on YouTube can be incredibly difficult, especially if you're just starting out. Most people usually just give up before they even get to that point. So in this video, I'm gonna give you three simple strategies you can use to break your first 100 YouTube subscribers. What's up everybody, my name is Patrick Dang, and before we go ahead and get started, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications if you wanna see more videos like this. Now, when it comes to getting more YouTube subscribers and getting more views, I'm not gonna say that I'm gonna be the best or the biggest YouTuber out there. I'm still learning just like everybody else and I'm constantly striving to get better. And my purpose for this video is really just to share my own personal experiences in hopes that it might be able to help you out. Now, I was able to get my first 100 subscribers just from posting one or two videos within uh, two weeks. And so I wanna share with you how I was able to do it relatively quickly and how you might be able to take some inspiration from that and get your first 100 subs. Now the first tip when it comes to getting your first 100 YouTube subscribers is really just to get in the game. Now I've talked to a lot of people who say they want to start YouTube about this and that but when I ask them like hey when you're gonna release your first video most people will say something like oh I don't have a camera yet I don't have audio equipment I don't have lighting I don't have this I don't have that really it's just a bunch of excuses. Now a lot of other people I find they'll say something like oh, I'm a perfectionist, so I wanna make sure it's perfect before I put out my first video. Now, that's kind of interesting because a lot of times the idea of being perfect or making sure everything looks great uh, can actually paralyze people from just even getting started. And something I learned from the author Brandon Bouchard is that he said that people who try to be perfectionists usually are just too afraid to put something out there because they don't want to get judged by other people. In fact, when you look at the definition of perfectionism or being a perfectionist, you have to perfect something. Really, it's a journey, right? So if you don't put anything out, you don't even have anything to perfect. So the first step really is just to get started. Now, when I first got started on YouTube, I really just put something out there. So you can kind of see in this video, I use the sunlight as uh, to light my face and it's obviously way overexposed. I literally just filmed this in a spare bedroom in my apartment and then I just used what I had. And you see those pictures in the background? Those pictures were just already there. I didn't even remove them. So I just left everything as is, turned on the camera, hit record and just started talking. And that's pretty much how I created my first video. Now over time, I obviously got better at making videos in terms of telling stories and lightings and things like that. But in the beginning, I really just started and I didn't really care too much about whether it's gonna be perfect or not because if I don't get started, there's nothing to perfect. But here's the thing, even though I put out the first video and I shared it on Facebook and LinkedIn to all my friends, you know, within that first day, that video only got 100 views. Now, when I first looked at it after the first day, you know, in the analytics and stuff, I was a little discouraged, you know, just 100 views, not 1,000 or 10,000, right? Because everyone seems to be getting all these huge numbers. But then I really thought back and reflected that is actually 100 people who saw my video. Now, in the past, I used to, I was in Toastmasters and I used to do speeches every week. It's like a club for uh, public speaking. Think about doing a speech in front of 100 people. That's huge. So if 100 people saw your video, then appreciate all the attention you get because people actually care and it matters. All right, so now we're gonna move into tip number two and that is creating content that people actually wanna see. Now, when I first made my first YouTube videos, and that's not the video that I showed you, that was like years before that, when I just was experimenting and just doing it for fun. Um, at the time, Casey Neistat was super popular vlogging his everyday life. So I thought I want to do YouTube too. I'm going to vlog my life. And you know, I started vlogging my life. I put out like 20 videos of me traveling and just doing random stuff. And they got a couple, some views, right? They got like a couple hundred views. So some of them got over a thousand, but really nobody was subscribing and I wasn't really building a community. And over time I realized that it's because I wasn't creating content that people wanted to see. I was being a little more selfish and just creating content that I thought was good, hoping that other people would see it. But if nobody's searching for it and they're not really interested in my everyday life, then they're not going to watch. So how exactly do you create content that people want to see? Well, for me personally, uh, before I started doing YouTube uh, less than a year ago, um, I actually am a sales coach. So I teach people how to do business to business sales, so selling in person and on the phone. And when I started doing YouTube, what I did was I really learned about YouTube SEO, search engine optimization. For example, if you type in the word sell, right? I teach people how to sell stuff. Um, you might see a phrase like sell me this pen. So you click on it and you see obviously all these videos that are titled sell me this pen. So when I looked at that, I kind of saw that people are searching this term, sell me this pen. So I'm gonna make my own spin, my own perspective on how people can sell a pen. You're not necessarily copying other people. You don't even have to watch 
other people's videos, but you need to see the title in terms of what people are already searching for, then you create content around that title. And one thing to note is that if you use a title that's similar to somebody else, that's totally okay because nobody owns a title. People title their videos by what people are already searching in Google. So if you want to take inspiration from other titles at work, that is totally fine. I think the trick to creating content is really finding something that you enjoy creating, like things, videos you would create for fun and matching that with what people want to see, right? So if you're only creating stuff that only you want to see and nobody watches, then that's to be expected because nobody wants to see it to begin with. On the reverse hand, if you're only creating content just to please other people, I think that's not necessarily sustainable in the long term and you know it doesn't really lead to happiness. So you want to find the happy medium of you know what is it that you like to do or create, what type of content you want to make, and what do people want to see. When you find the point when those two pieces uh, connect, then that's where you're going to find a good place where you can consistently create content. And tip number three that we have for you guys is your call to actions. Now you might notice in the beginning in the video, I asked you guys to like, subscribe, and then turn on notifications. And the reason I do that is because a lot of times if I don't do that, people who may be new to my videos or may be discovering me for the first time, they forget to like, they forget to subscribe, they forget to leave a comment and turn on notifications, and they might want to continue watching my videos. But if I don't remind people to do that, sometimes they don't do it. So in your videos, you have to basically have these call to actions, usually in the beginning and at the end, just to remind people for a second time. And I know that when you're starting out, it can feel kind of weird, right? Because you're asking people to do something. It feels really salesy in a way. But at this point in YouTube, it's such common practice. Everybody's doing it. And it's really normal for your to ask your audience to have these call to actions in terms of wanting to subscribe and, and like and things like that. And the reason why this is so important is because you need to understand understand the YouTube algorithm as a flywheel. So here's how it's gonna work. You create a piece of content, a video, you put it on YouTube, and then you share it on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever you have a little bit of a following, right? And in the beginning, it could just be your friends uh, watching your videos. So if you got 100 people to watch your videos, not bad. Um, if you're telling people to like, subscribe, leave a comment, then that triggers the algorithm to say, hey, People are very engaged with this video. Let's go ahead and share this video to more people on YouTube. So that's when your video gets recommended and suggested and more people that have no idea who you are will find your video. When you get those initial views, you get those call to actions, getting people to like, subscribe, turn on notification, and then the algorithm will suggest you to more people on YouTube which will get you more views. And the more views you get, the more call to actions you have, which will get more people to like and subscribe. And you can kind of see that cycle continuing. Now I'll give you a personal example of when I put out my first YouTube video, right? So my first video that I put out was top 10 LinkedIn profile tips, right? Showing people how they can improve their LinkedIn profile. Now, when I first put this video out, I shared on Facebook and LinkedIn and things like that. And in the beginning, it only got 100 views. Now, because I had two call to actions in the beginning and the end telling people to like, subscribe and turn on notifications, people actually did it. So even though 100 people only watched, a lot of people out of those 100 subscribed to my channel because I told them to, right? And they're interested in learning more. So every time I release a new video, they're gonna watch again and again and again. Now, because people are engaged with this video so much, meaning they're subscribing, they're, they're liking it, YouTube is gonna recommend that to more people and then more people will see it. So if you look at the analytics for this specific video over here, in the beginning, it literally just got like 100 views. Now, uh, over the course of a little bit more than half a year, it has over a thousand views, right? 1,300 at the time of this recording. But if you look at how many subscribers this one video got, it's actually 70 subscribers. So over time, this one video, the first video that I put out, now it has over a thousand views and that video alone got me 70 subscribers. Now this doesn't happen over a month or two months. It literally happens over like half a year, right? It takes time for this video to build up, but that's the magic of YouTube, right? They constantly refer new viewers to videos that even though you put it out like six months ago or a year ago, it constantly gets traction. And that's how it works because uh, as I said before, if you're creating content that people wanna see, people are gonna type uh, certain keywords into Google or YouTube, and then they're gonna find your video. And this happens just uh, over time. So for this specific video, I can see it getting 5,000 views or 10,000 views years from now, uh, just because you know I did the SEO really well and people are searching for it. And th that's how my channel is growing currently. So when you're thinking about getting your first 100 subscribers, literally one video that you put out can get you to that 100 mark uh, right off the bat, but it might take a little more time. So the most important things that you got to remember is get in the game, you know, put out videos, at least put one video a week. Even if you don't have time, find the 
you time, make sure you create content that people want to see, and make sure you have your call to actions because if you don't ask people to subscribe, they are not going to subscribe or they'll forget. So that's going to be my three tips you can use to get your first 100 subscribers. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. See what I did there? Now, a little news about the future of this channel. If you've been following me for a while now, you know that I teach a lot of sales content on this channel. And one thing you may not know is that I'm actually very passionate about marketing, online business, and entrepreneurship, and helping people grow their own businesses. So moving forward, not only am I going to be dropping these fire sales videos that you guys love, but I'm also gonna be documenting my journey on YouTube and sharing all my experiences of doing an online business, because I know a lot of you guys are interested in that. So with that said, I really hope you guys stick with me through this journey, because I'm excited to share basically everything that I know with you guys when it comes to uh, starting, starting your own business and starting a YouTube channel and, and doing all these things. So with that said, really appreciate you guys' attention. I hope you guys love the videos and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one.